Well, hello and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. It's Wednesday, so it's time for another midweek mini mail call. And this week, it's going to be Apple stuff. So hold on to your apples and let's get right to it. All right, we have some packages here, two boxes. They come from Tofen in Livermore, California. Hi to all my California viewers. Probably a lot of you. Tofen clued me in into what was being sent. So I think I know what this is, but I'm not totally sure. There is a letter. I'm not gonna read all of it because it gives away what this is, but it says, here's the machine we discussed. There's nothing wrong with it, unless something gets shaken loose in shipping. I bought it on eBay in 2016 and had to replace the power supply. A friend added a little temperature control fan to leverage the fan header on the motherboard. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a second. But I think it's a bit loud and makes it sound like it has a hard drive. Feel free to rip that out. The same friend also helped me recap most of the monitor and I've enclosed extra caps and miscellaneous fuses for your inventory, that's amazing. Apologies for the crap keyboard and mottled color of the plastic. <laughs> it was my first attempt at retro writing and it didn't go exactly to plan. Thanks for keeping us entertained during the pandemic. I usually watch your videos while exercising on a Roy machine and try not to end my session until the end of your videos. Your recent IBM AT repair and Commodore Bridgeboard videos have given me quite the extended workout. You know what? Um, I'm sitting around in the basement quite a bit gaining weight. I just weighed myself. I gained a few pounds since December. So it's really good, Tofen, that you are losing weight while watching me gain it on video. Best from the Bay Area, Tofen. Sounds like Stefan without the S. Oh, so <laughs> Stefan. So Tefin. Okay. So, te it's pronounced Tefin. I've been pronouncing it Tofen. I'm sorry about that. I actually have to admit, I looked up your name online to see how to pronounce it. And I swear that the website I found said Tofen, but it's uh, Tefin because it's Stefan without the S. All right. Well, let's dig in. All right. So it's not a Mac Mini. I can tell everyone that. I'm just going to unbox this stuff here and we will dig into uh, what's in here. So we have extra caps. We have some candy here. These are the uh, the Albanese. These are the bears. Yeah, um, gummy bears. I've definitely some viewers have sent these in before and they're very tasty. Okay, well, here's a, a manual for what's been sent in as a little preview there. Here's a keyboard. It's a Apple desktop keyboard. Yeah, it is pretty funny. The colors, <laughs> I can tell <laughs> the keys came out quite, quite different. And the whole thing, the whole keyboard is bent. That's hilarious. And yes, it's a, we'll look at the plastic in a second. It's, it's got some marbling effect going on. Okay. We have something in there. Got loads of cables here. Whoops. More cables more goodies and another cable here. All right, here's the, here's the thing we're going to be looking at. It's an Apple 2GS. Yes, it's a 2GS. Ah, uh, yes. I see a little bit of the marbling on the plastic. Always the danger when you retrobite these computers, the Apple computers. All right. And onto the second box here. This looks like the packing material you get with HelloFresh. That's what they've been using lately. They seem to rotate through several different types of packing material, but this uh, paper wrap stuff I've noticed is what they've been using lately. And here we have it. It's an Apple 2GS Ow. <laughs> monitor. I just banged my elbow on the computer there. It looks great. Very nice. And it survived shipping. Always the scary danger when you ship a monitor is is it going to break? Kind of like uh, that Commodore 1802 
that I recently showed. Although maybe I haven't recently shown that. If I haven't, if you haven't seen an 1802 from Commodore on the channel yet, it's coming up. Well, it'll be on the second channel actually. I'm just not sure if it's going to be out by the time this video is out. Excellent packing job, Teffen. The, mach the machine and the monitor and everything seem to survive perfectly. And the monitor is really heavy. Okay, let's start with the Apple II GS here. Looks pretty nice. I am led to believe that this is a ROM 3 machine, which people are probably asking, hey, you already have a 2GS because I have shown one on the channel. And that is correct, but I do not have a ROM 3 2GS. So let me just pop this open. Why is this so stuck on one side? What is happening? Oh, there we go. I don't know why that was stuck. All right, well, there's the 2GS. And yes, indeed, it's a ROM 3, and I don't have a ROM 3 machine. So the fan thing is here. And um, I guess uh, this came disconnected in shipping. I am definitely not going to be keeping that. So there is the fan on the side of the power supply. And it's true, the power supplies in these machines, they do run a little hot. And they, you know, as you can see there, there's a fan grill. It can take a correctly sized fan. I think there's, it was designed with some plastic carrier in mind. And of course that carrier is maybe 3D printable, but is not something that is easily obtainable. So for now, I just need to pull this off. So there's the little temperature controlled thing for the uh, fan. I mean, it's kind of cute actually. I guess we have a small Atmel microcontroller there. We have the uh, switching transistor. And then this little board here is obviously some kind of temperature sensor or something. And there it is, a little hand soldered action. Yeah, I mean, kind of cool, I gotta say. Creative use of such a thing. But knowing these little fans here, this would be like a little CPU fan from a 46 or something, it's gonna be kind of noisy. Has an Apple Computer Inc. here with a model number. I mean, um, I haven't seen particularly the 2GS ROM 3s. Maybe this is how the power supply looks in all of them. In my 2GS, which was not a ROM 3, it's a ROM 1. That's the one I have that's complete. That has a more shiny, kind of smooth edged power supply of type. But we can just pop that out like so. There it is. 70 watt power supply, it says. Hmm. All right. I have to wonder what was wrong with the old one because pretty much these power supplies are very serviceable or easy to fix. So there is the 2GS. So it's got the battery in here, which I am going to take out. I assume it's been swapped out at some point, but I just do not like these lithium batteries because they leak everywhere. We have a RAM card here. Oh, it's fully populated. I think this is one megabyte. It's kind of funny how there's this cloth tape on here. I don't know if that's on purpose or what. On the original Apple II GSs, they had 256K on the motherboard. There was 64K and 64K for the Apple II, so you had 128K, plus an extra 128K kind of for the 2GS stuff. So that gave you a total of 256. And then this card originally came soldered with 256, so you had a total of 512, and fully populated the springs up to one meg. I'm pretty sure all of the original 2GSs came with this card populated, so every 2GS really came with 512K. It was not really enough to do much though, so you really had to upgrade it to the full uh, one megabyte, which has been done here. But the difference on the ROM 3, from my understanding, and I'm probably gonna get this wrong, this motherboard is redesigned. It has a, the ROM 3 ROM here, which is an EEPROM, which is kind of cool. It has additional libraries in ROM, but it also has more memory on the motherboard. I think it's got one megabyte of RAM on the motherboard. And here is the 128K of standard RAM in my recent Apple II GS video where I repaired the memory. This was bank E0 and E1. And one of those was bad. I think can't remember which one it was now. And then we have what looks like, uh, what does this say? Sound RAM, so that's another 64K of sound RAM. And this right here looks like it's one meg of RAM. So I'm pretty sure it's one meg plus 128K. I think that is what comes on these ROM 3 machines. 
I don't think the ROM 3 board actually gives you anything over the earlier ROM 1 machine when you have a RAM expansion. I think compatibility-wise, they're both identical. I'll have to go read up to see if there's any other differences between the ROM 3 and the ROM 1. I don't think there is. But I do know for sure that you can't just take the ROM 3 and adapt that to work in the older Apple II GS motherboards. It's just not compatible. One thing I do kind of like is that this stock RAM here is positioned a little bit towards the back of the computer more than on the other machines. The other one it actually is underneath this lip a little bit. So if you repair the RAM in here, like I did in my video, and you put a socket in, you will not be able to reinstall the motherboard. I had to cut away a little bit of the case right under there to allow it to fit back together. I mean, it was a very minor modification. I just used a Dremel. Just cut away a little bit of the case, just on the underside here, this plastic stuff. No big deal. But in this one, it definitely looks like a socket and the chip would fit in without an issue. In addition, I'm holding the card the whole time here. This is an Apple SCSI card. I am lucky enough to have the Apple II SCSI card with DMA, and it's actually in my other Apple II GS. This one is definitely not as fast. It's a much simpler card. It's got a regular NCR SCSI controller chip there and a BIOS. Uh, this looks like some static RAM here and just a little bit of support logic, couple PALs. Nothing too crazy about this card. The DMA controller has a big custom IC on it because it is a lot faster. It's able to do DMA transfers between the SCSI controller and the system memory without using the CPU to do it. So you get that speed boost but I'm not sure about compatibility, if one's better than the other or whatnot. So pretty cool to have uh, this other card here. I'm not totally sure why there's a zip tie on here, so I'm just gonna clip that off. Maybe it was just to kind of hold this all in together in shipping. Okay, come on, stop moving. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. There, I cut the bottom. Why don't I just remove these uh, zip ties off the fan here so we can pull that off. And this little fan, as you can see, it's a little 12 volt fan. As Tefan said in his letter, it's funny that Apple included this fan spot on the power supply here. Obviously the fan would overlap a little bit with the edge. And on the 2GS right here where my finger is, there's a fan header. So why would there be provision for a fan here and a fan header and nothing was installed? I can't blame Steve Jobs because he wasn't with the company at the time, but it's kind of odd that that's how it all went down in the end. But I know with my 2GS that I had back in the day, when I was young, I used the heck out of that computer just all the time. And I did not have a fan in it. But one thing is, is I also did not have the Apple monitor, which sits on top of the computer, kind of blocking the vents. I had a larger monitor that I used to just keep off to the side and the 2GS would sit uncovered. So any heat from the machine would just come out the top vents. Well, everything in the 2GS looks absolutely perfect. The front of the case, it's got a little bit of that mottled look to it from the retro writing process. The top looks pretty good, but I have luckily not had this problem on any of the Apple stuff that I've retro brighted, but I know it's very, very possible that it can happen. The inside shielding here definitely has a little bit of uh, evidence of the retro writing process as well. A little bit of rust on it. Actually, I just decided to take the shield off entirely, and there it is. Let's see if you can see it there. You can see some of the rust that was just starting in there. So I just don't want that to kind of continue unabated. So I've removed that. Put the lid back on. Why don't we power this up? See if we hear the good old beep. Okay, the 2GS hooked up to the retro tank and the video capture device, and let's turn it on. I have the speakers hooked up, so it's not gonna use the internal speaker. Let's see how it sounds. That sounds good. And look, we have an image, ROM 3. Let's grab the uh, very funny colored keyboard. It's almost like this is a lot grayer than the keys. Keys turned out probably fine, but the uh, this part of the plastic didn't. And the logo also looks like it's a bit damaged. A little top tip, you can actually remove that logo if you take the keyboard apart. It's possible to use some heat and there's a little pinhole in the back of the logo, you can pop it out. The other thing is you could also take masking tape and put that over the label and then carefully cut around it with an X-Acto blade. Although personally, I would just take the logo out. That way it doesn't get damaged. It's definitely a little faded and whatever, but the whole keyboard is um, 
looking a little funky. Obviously, this is not the Apple IIgs keyboard. This is a, a later Macintosh keyboard. It's rubber dome. It has a weird layout where the escape key is over here because on the Mac, you know, it don't, doesn't matter necessarily because escape on the Apple IIgs keyboard is in the normal position for the Apple II. Not, not a great keyboard, but these are really plentiful and they're very cheap and it's kind of close enough for the 2GS. Um, the 2GS keyboard though is an Alps keyboard. It's very, very nice board and it matches the 2GS perfectly. Before I power this on, I'm just gonna mention I have the audio from the computer hooked up into the capture device. So you're actually gonna hear that horrible startup sound in perfect clarity. I really don't think the 2GS has a very nice sound. Here it is, I mean, wait, correction before I turn this on. Good sound, like good capabilities, but Apple chose the most junky sounding beep possible. And you can change the pitch of it in the control panel and it just it sounds bad and no matter what pitch you're gonna be at. So here we go, listen to the clarity. <laughs> okay, ROM3, check startup device. Okay, so we're gonna go control, open Apple, escape, go into this, and we can check out the sound is what I was talking about. Hey, those are your choices and none of them sound very good. Anyhow, let's run the diagnostics because so far this machine seems to be working properly. So you hold down option, open Apple, which is open Apple, closed Apple, control and reset. When you let go, it starts running the diagnostics. Okay, we're not seeing any color right now, by the way, because I have hooked up the retro tink and it's set to monochrome mode. So there would normally be color here. I'm gonna say the diagnostics probably take longer to run on this ROM 3 because there's actually more memory. I think it's testing all the motherboard memory, all one megabyte plus the 128K versus the regular diagnostic, which I don't think checks the RAM on the RAM card. It's just checking the 256K on the motherboard and that's it. I'm gonna say that there's some weird kind of buzzing I hear on the sound output from the 2GS through my speaker at least. And I think it's capturing that as well. And that's definitely not my capture device. I'm using a really good quality USB capture device. And I've captured stuff off like the Sound Blaster and stuff and the SID sounds perfect. So I don't know what's going on with this 2GS. I'm, it, it may not be a fault. It might still be a ground loop thing going on between the, the capture device or whatever. I don't know. But anyways, it does sound a little strange. And yeah, this diagnostic process is taking a very long time. System good? Tefin, it's an excellent working Apple II GS. Awesome. So I just did a quick Google to see what the difference between the ROM 1 and the ROM 3 2GS was, and I found an old mailing list email from 1998. Let's take a look. Here's the question. I don't understand the difference between the two. Uh, that would be the ROM 3 or the ROM 1. Is one better or more compatible? And I think the answer, well, to an outsider or anyone totally unfamiliar with the Apple II, the differences are rather insignificant and trivial. For the most part, it can be summed up as the original Apple II GS computer only uh, with more built-in RAM and ROM. That observation wouldn't be too off from the, far off from the mark as the 2GS as manufactured and shipped from Apple remained relatively unchanged through its six plus year lifespan. Yeah, here's the actual differences. So the first motherboard revision of the GS had 256K of RAM built in, 128K of ROM. And the firmware plugged into this board was known as ROM00. It was replaced by the ROM1 or 01 firmware, which off Apple offered as a free update by simply swapping a single ROM chip. The next motherboard revision was called the Apple II GS with one megabyte of RAM. That was the actual name, I guess. And as the name implied, came with just over one meg of memory or 1,152K to be exact, exact, which is 1,024K plus 128K, which gives you 1,152. Both machines had that 120K of slow RAM, but the ROM01 and 00 had 120K of fast RAM, while the ROM3 had one meg of fast RAM. So there you go, 128 plus 128, 256. There's the maths. It also doubled the ROM size, totaling 256K. 
the ROM 00 and 01 firmware was only 128, and the third revision of the firmware Apple decided to call ROM 3 rather than ROM 2. The new board also, also featured a newer ADB micro, microcontroller, I guess, built-in keyboard, mouse, sticky keys, and an updated of extended keyboard LEDs. Oh, updating, if, okay, so if you use the larger keyboard, it actually toggles the LEDs on it. That's pretty cool. The motherboard zero signal required by video cards available in slot one through slot six rather than just slot three on the old board. MB3, MB0, is that for like the Genlock card or something? I mean, that's just nothing. Hardware shadowing of text page two had a removable clock battery, which I just took out, and a set of jumper pins to lock out the classic text control panel and decreased electrical noise and power consumption. It, so it had cleaner sound and more likely to work with sensitive cards. Hmm. And really the ROM changes, it just had more tool sets in ROM, so probably booted faster. It gives it faster three and a half inch drive and RAM just firmware when using 8-bit mode. And it made it so you could set slot four to your card without losing the mouse in GSOS. Oh, how fascinating. Apple Talk was less constricted in terms of slot assignment and they cleaned up the classic test control panel, let you warm boot to resize RAM disks, added new system monitor features, and of course, many bug fixes, but also new bugs added, of course. It did say the ROM board was slightly faster when running native software and gave you many small benefits uh, you did not get on the original ones. Being able to have five megs of RAM was an obvious one. Not having that annoying buzzing and hissing from the Insonic chip or using a 15 megahertz G, uh, Zip GS were a couple more worth mentioning. I guess there were some compatibility issues like there were when they moved to ROM 1, but everything that was worthwhile has been patched and updated, so obviously it works. It was mostly hard-coded games and demos that had problem with the new ROM. All of this off the top of my head, so blah, blah, blah. Okay, there we go. That was from Michael Spector. Oh, and yeah, there it is. MB0 signal was used by the video overlay card. That's the Genlock card that Apple made, which was super expensive. And the second site together, I don't know what second site did, but that was uh, the slot three limitation on the older one. Here are the updates to the monitor. It has a step trace command and improved disassembler. <laughs> and you can peek at the super high res graphics. Uh, you can hit S and that shows you that. That's cool. You could poke, you could do poke commands to actually get to that. It was like, I think one or two pokes would show that as, but you know, without having to remember that, you just drop to the monitor and hit S. So there we go. Those seem to be the differences between these two machines. Nothing substantial. It's kind of cool that it's faster Kind of sucks it's a little bit less compatible, so I guess for ultimate compatibility, you got to have both. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at this manual here that came with the machine. I definitely had this with my computer. I kind of recall that it was color, the picture on the front here. Maybe I'm mistaken on that recollection, though. But the Apple II GS owner's reference, it's a pretty chunky manual as well. Let's see what's in here, if there's anything good. Right off the bat, we have this color image here from a school with these uh, two girls here using this 2GS. It seems to be loaded up with dual floppy drives and the Apple 20 meg hard drive there while the teachers work in the background. Over here on the side here, you have an image writer just sitting on the desk alone with no cables. And of course, the 2GS itself has no cables. It seems to be on, at least uh, there's a fake image but who knows how it all works. Well, there's a wire there coming out of the keyboard, but <laughs> where are the power cords? I suppose the photographer could have very carefully hidden this behind these books and goes under the desk. Probably wasn't really on though. But look at the openness Apple had about opening the machine and plugging in cards and stuff. It's literally on page two of the manual on what the inside of the machine looks like. Boy, has things changed. Oh, yeah, we have a yuppie a guy who he does his architecture drafting on his Apple II GS. Like, really? Really? Like, he's designing these buildings and all these incredible plans on his Apple II GS. Yeah, I don't think that's actually happening. Like, did anyone really do this? The software that's actually running on here looks almost like a something that you would do your like interior floor plan of your house with, not, not professional level stuff. You would be using a PC. 
for this. You really would. Maybe a Mac, but not a 2GS. I'm sorry, I love the 2GS, but no, just simply no. There's a little section on using the mouse keys, which is like the number keypad to move the mouse pointer around. So that is possible because of that updated ADB microcontroller that's on the 2GS versus on the original one, which is just not possible. And that's actually not something that was ever on the Max either. So it's just kind of nice. If you didn't have the mouse for some reason, you could still get by. It's not gonna be perfect, but you can function. Oh yeah, here we are in the chemistry lab. We have a kid using the Apple II GS and there's a Mac 2 CI sitting here. Like really you'd use an Apple II instead of this Mac 2 CI. This thing just kicked butt over the 2 GS. Of course it costs like $10,000 and I don't know, the 2 GS was far, far less expensive. Still expensive, but far less than any Macintosh. It actually looks like the 2 CI here, which has no keyboard and mouse incidentally, has Apple Share running on it. It looks like the Apple Share program is up there. So probably they were like net booting the 2GS or trying to insinuate that that was possible. Uh, so that these two 2GSs two here were actually using this as like a file server. And uh, it looks like they have a five and a quarter inch and a three and a half inch drive there on both of these machines. And I don't know, yeah, I might, it might actually be like the Apple Talk stuff showing up there. I've never actually got this stuff to work. Now I have a 2CI and I have a full set of Apple Talk software. So if anyone knows uh, or can recommend to me where to get the software to run on my 2CI to then net boot or do sharing and stuff between the apples, please let me know. I'm super interested in that. This whole guide is pretty nice though. It's talking about how to use GSOS, which, you know, that's not something you get these days. Nothing really teaches you anything. All right, onto the next picture. So we have a uh, grandma and grandpa here and they're using a 2GS to run their flower shop. At least they have the keyboard and the mouse connected properly. I mean, <laughs> that's good. But ergonomically, that's certainly not great. If you're standing at the desk and trying to use the computer, your neck's gonna hurt pretty quickly. At least this is a somewhat believable scenario for the way you might use an Apple 2GS. Next up, <laughs> We got two kids that could be playing outside, riding their bike, playing baseball, but they're instead, they're inside using their Apple II GS here, which, hey, I gotta admit, something that I definitely did quite a bit of when I was a kid, probably should have been outside playing, and instead I was on my Apple II GS. And I gotta say, I hope this kid doesn't have back problems because if you lie down like that too much, it's gonna hurt your back and your neck. Also pretty hilarious, this kid here looks like to be eating an apple while they're using an apple. Also kind of curious, this kid here is using the mouse with his left hand. Of course, the power LEDs aren't even on, so it's a fake computer going on. I mean, and what parent would let their kid just set up their couple thousand dollar computer on the floor like that? Like no desk, really? Do you spend all your money on an Apple II GS instead of a Atari ST so you couldn't even get a desk? And next up, <laughs> what's this one? <laughs> okay, so it's a dad and his daughter, it looks like, and uh, with the city skyline in the background, so they live in a skyscraper. And there they are, they're doing artwork stuff on the 2GS, pretty awesome. Ooh, and look at this, Apple 20 meg hard drive right there, double three and a half inch floppies, and pretty cool, we have a Sony video camera there Oh, and I just noticed a Sony TV up there with the same image. So were they capturing this off of the TV or, or what? Or were they trying to display that on the TV? I think that's what they were doing actually. Maybe they were recording it onto this awesome looking VCR, which is also Sony, I might add. They have a nice Sony trifecta there. The Apple II GS monitor, unlike the ones for the Color Macintosh, is a lot of the Color Macs, especially early on. This was not made by Sony, while the one, the monitor for the 2CI and other apples were. Oh, I just went back, I almost missed this one here. So it looks like mom is doing her household expenses and the kids got some receipts there to help her out. You know, very uh, late 80s kitchen here. And look at all this wine. Maybe she really doesn't like her husband. She's gotta drink herself, you know, it's a bad marriage. Who knows, she's just staying together for this kid here. Uh, it looks like, you know, good amount of baking stuff, lots of cookbooks. She's probably a really great cook. Oh, we got a hot point microwave oven back here as well. It's pretty slick. 
And let's move to the next one that I skipped over. Oh, it's piano lessons with a guy with long hair and a mustache. Oh yeah. She seems to have a crush on her piano teacher more than anything. I mean, look at her gaze. She's like, stop talking about notes and just stare into my eyes. She's got a floppy disk in her hand. He's got some uh, blank sheets of music that have nothing on them. So I don't know what's going on, but over here, there's an Apple II GS. It's got a keyboard connected to it, two floppy drives. So I guess it's, you know, used for MIDI and stuff. Although it definitely looks like it's got a paint program up on the screen and not anything to do with music. So that's a little funny, but the interior decor of this living room looks a little austere. It's just pretty blank walls. I mean, there's something here and two pictures there, but not a whole lot going on. At least there's a little bit of flowers going on there. And there is an apple sitting next to the machine, which is nice. Ooh, and this window is open. Bugs might fly right in. All right, next up, an Apple II GS used in a computer education setting. It looks like a library and it says computer terminal here. On the 2GS, we have what looks like the Apple CD-ROM drive. It's got a caddy, two floppy drives, and I guess some type of encyclopedia type software. And we have two students here using the machine and looking stuff up on that massive CD-ROM, you know, and storing its entire encyclopedia on one disc. It's amazing. I don't really know how many uh, encyclopedia type software packages were available for the 2GS. Of course, stuff like Encarta, things like that for the PC were pretty popular. I'm just not really sure the 2GS had a big library of that stuff. And I do think that this guy here with the mustache must not be a real librarian or a real teacher. No, I'm just kidding about that. But this does not look like a real library, even though it's got an old card catalog here. It's got like regular household carpet here. And then it has like normal trim around the, the, the walls here. So this really looks like it's inside of a house. They just loaded in some bookshelves and some uh, card file catalogs. Now there might be young people watching who don't even know what these are. But yes, in libraries, before we had computers, we had to go look up what you were looking for in these card catalogs and inside the little cards, which were ordered in different, different types of sorts, you would figure out, like I say, you're looking by, by author, you'd find the author and it would list the books and would show the number. And then you had to look for the book on the shelves using these little numbers printed on these tabs here. And I'm sure that's still the same now, but of course you would go and type it in the computer, what you're looking for. And it would tell you exactly what aisle to go to and then what number to look for. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the dumbest picture. <laughs> All right. So are they supposed to be at summer camp? Um, what kind of a uh, window would have this view? Like they're up on a mountain somewhere with this incredible view, which there's just no way that you'd see that outside of a regular window. Of course, there's an Apple sitting right here next to this 2GS, which has some kind of music software on it, two disk drives and some cookies and it looks like a coffee cup or something. He is using the mouse left-handed or is it really just because that girl is sitting on the table bothering him He's like, I'm just trying to use this computer. Can you leave me alone? And she's probably like, no, no. And she puts her hands in front of the screen and he's like, get out of here. You're just a girl. I need to use this computer. I'm more interested in the computer. And this guy is like, hey, I'm playing a guitar. I'm way cuter than the computer nerd kid. So come and talk to me. But this girl's like, no, I like smart kids. So screw you. Don't fall out the window. I'm sticking with the smart kid here with the Apple II GS. Other interesting things to notice is there's a fire roaring in this uh, wood-fired stove here, even though the windows are wide open. So that's weird. And then we have an old style lantern there. And who remembers these canteens for drinking water? The ones with the, the, the carpet on the side. And there's a more traditional kind of leather pouch one. Very nice knitted rug there on the wall. We have what looks like a moose. And we have actually a piece of art hanging on the wall, which is a bit weird for like a kid's camp room that has a picnic table inside. Okay. But I do have to laugh at the one final thing. Her sweatshirt says roughing it day camp. And then there's an Apple II GS, which of course is not plugged into anything because you know, who needs power? You had wireless power on the Apple II GS. I think I forgot to mention that on the ROM three version. Yeah, that was something they added. Ooh, we're getting serious now. Kids are getting older. All right. So looks like this kid, he loves school so much. Oh, I could tell right there he's playing the game Hacker. 
he's staying late in the computer lab. And this is the custodian who comes in who's like, you need to not be in here. You should not be playing on this computer after hours. You are not allowed. But he's like, yes, but this game is so addicting, even though this is right at the beginning of the game, I cannot stop using it. Now, actually, I did not know that there was a version of the hacker game for the 2GS. Ooh, the monitor is actually turned on. I see the green power LED. Amazing. But overall, this is a pretty funny scene here. So we have all Apple IIEs in the background here. There's a whole bunch of them with the color monitor and like the double disk drives there. It's not the duo drive, it's just two disk drives. But there's one other Apple IIGS parked back there. Everyone else is gets stuck with the old monochrome Apple IIe, and they all seem to be running Apple Works, various stages of like word processors and things like that. I just noticed the guy has his cart here with his trash can and his duster and his broom and stuff like that. And he goes, you whippersnapper, you shouldn't be using this computer. I need to clean it. So get your hands off of it so I can dust it with my feather duster. And Apple seemed to think that this was the appropriate picture for the troubleshooting section. Why? I don't know. Oh, and you know what? That might be it for the pictures. I don't think there are any more. That is quite sad. I mean, of course, it's telling you how to ground yourself and install the RAM card and stuff like that, which of course is very cool, but no more funny pictures. That was the whole fun of this book, to be honest. I had a great time looking at those funny pictures and I know, you know, some marketing person put a bunch of effort into making those and I made fun of their work, but sorry, it's pretty silly. Okay, I'm really struggling here. I don't like these types of spiral bound books. There we go. All right, well, I've been chatting about the manual so long, we didn't even look at these other boxes here. So let's see what's going on in this stuff here. It says zip drive in here in this Mac mini box. This looks like one of the fancy Mac minis too. Is this like an M1 Mac mini? Mac mini space gray, 3.6 gigahertz QC. So quad core, so definitely not uh, this is an Intel Core i3, yeah, wah, 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 kind of boring. All right, this is a zip drive, and this is a SCSI zip drive because the, oh, it's a 250 meg SCSI zip drive. I don't have a, any of those. I have one SCSI zip drive, and it's just the old 100 megabyte type. So that is pretty awesome. Thank you very much, Tefan, for sending that in. One of the feet fell off. Let's just slip this back on. This rubber foot does not want to go back on. I think I have to kind of stuff the little rubber bits back in. Anyhow, not much to say about a zip drive. They work and hopefully this one does. I'll plug the power into this and we'll grab a zip disk in a sec. So it does light up. Tefan may have included a zip drive in one of these bags. So let's just take a look at what's in here or zip disk rather. And there we go. We have three 250 meg disk cartridges. That's pretty awesome. I have a few of these, I think but I mostly have uh, the 100 meg versions, which this drive is completely capable of reading as well. Let's just stick this in here. Sounds like it's working perfectly. Thumbs up to that. I can always use extra zip drives. I find them very useful. I know lots of people think they're very unreliable, but I personally really like them. And of course you can use the SCSI version on Macs and Amigas and stuff like that. The 2GS as well, if you have a SCSI card. And then of course, uh, you can take these disks, put them inside a PC using a USB or IDE drive, and you can image them using cider press and stuff like that, or just whatever. So it's a great way to get files to and from uh, an Apple II or a Mac or any machine for that matter. These things are super useful. Let's just take a quick gummy bear interlude. These are really good. These ones are kind of shiny and yummy. Yummy and delicious. They definitely have a different taste than Haribo's, but I like them. Ingredients, corn syrup from corn, <laughs> sugar from beets, water, gelatin, citric acid, natural artificial flavors, pectin, derived from fruits, vegetable oil, which is coconut, canola, and carnauba leaf wax to prevent sticking. FD&C yellow number five, FD&C red number 40, FD&C blue number one, and FD&C yellow number six. There we go. Not a whole lot in this. Low sodium, it says. It does have lots of sugar though, so good for when I have low blood sugar. Awesome, thank you. 
All right, next up, uh, this says, I had an extra Google Nest Mini. <laughs> I got as part of a promo, so I saw that you have several Google devices, so hopefully you can use. <laughs> I guess this is one of the new ones. That's kind of cool. It's the second generation. I don't even know what that means. I definitely have a few of these around the house. And yeah, I have Google Home on the desk here and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, thanks. I don't know if there's a difference. Maybe this sounds better than the old ones. I got to think about where I have the old puck type ones. I mostly have the screen type. Oh, you know, I have one of these in my theater room downstairs here. Oh yeah, cool, thank you. We have this, which looks like they're caps from DigiKey. Leftovers from the recapping of the monitor, which we haven't taken a look at yet. So, uh, yep, we got some various caps here, pretty sweet. Ooh, fuses. Those are always handy, 10 amp. And a whole pack of these, which are 500 milliamp. Well, that is cool. Thank you very much for that. I can always use extra fuses. And yeah, just some extra caps, which I will take and put back into my stock. Very handy. Before we take a look at the monitor, this is the last bit of stuff here. So we have a 15 pin to 15 pin D sub. That'd be for hooking the monitor up. We have the original Apple mouse. This is the old wedge type, which I kind of like. I have a soft spot in my heart for those. Looks like we have an extra 15 pin to 15 pin cable. We have an IEC mains cord with the US plug. And then this is the iOmega Zip SCSI drive cable. Excellent. Let me put the monitor on top of the computer for proper testing. All right, so the 2GS is set up as people might do it, like the pictures in the manual. Monitor on top of the machine here. We have the Apple three and a half inch disk drive sitting on top of the Apple five and a quarter inch disk drive. You can daisy chain these together keyboards up here and the mouse is over here. I do have a floppy emu hooked up, so I'll boot off of that and not these disk drives. But let me power on this monitor and see if it is working. Whoa, that's normal, that loud clunky noise it makes. It always does that. And let's get the power on the computer. All right, so no sound because I had the speakers hooked up. Now, uh, this is not a fault. This is just because the uh, Horizontal hold is not adjusted correctly. There we go. The Apple monitor is kind of weird because if you move it over to this side, like right there, if I turn the monitor off and on, you will see that it will be out of sync again. Yep, that is very typical for this monitor. It's just the way it is. You gotta kind of get it right there. And I think that's about it. When I turn it back on, it will probably still be in sync. Yeah, this it is. But if you move it any further to the right, it will not stay in sync. All right, so let's see how the quality of this CRT is. So it's a little worn, which is very typical for these CRTs. Unfortunately, they just got a lot of use in the school environments they were in, because down at the lower end of the contrast knob, there's just a lot of black. And there's no detent, but you kind of have to turn it all the way to maximum for the screen to be bright. And the brightness knob, on the other hand, there's the center detent. We keep turning it off. Yeah, there's a little bit of blooming going on now. So that's, that's about it right there. It's pretty good. It is pretty good. I don't think it's as bright as it was when it was new, but overall, not bad. Geometry is decent. I know it was recapped, but um, I don't think it geez, generally need that unless the geometry is really screwy. It's got a little bit of pin cushion going on. Not sure if that's a control on the inside. What else do we have on the back here? All right, so the first one is the horizontal, which we know about. Then we can shrink and enlarge the picture. Oh, and that is my fault, the cable is coming loose. And the last one here is vertical hold. Okay, so no real controls. The, the, one you, the middle knob here allows you to shrink the picture and I think that's because if we go in the PAL mode, let's boot this into PAL mode. You hold down option control reset and we say set to 50 Hertz. There it is, it's gonna be rolling in the, in the camera. That is not rolling to my eyes. It's just running at 50 Hertz. This monitor completely is capable of running in either mode, but you do kind of have to squish the picture to see it all. Although one of the problems is you'll notice when you run the 2GS in PAL, you have a rather large blue border at the bottom, which is kind of junky. The, the active picture area is up here. 
and that's just the way it is. But if we switch back to NTSC, now we have uh, black on the top and the bottom again, which we have to use that center knob to kind of get it all back into alignment there. There we go. All right, just reconfigured the smart drive on the floppy EMU here. This is the hard drive emulation that it's doing through the floppy port. So let's reboot. It should boot off of GSOS here. Let's see. May need to power cycle this. Oh yeah, disk error. Let's restart this thing. All right, try this again. There it is. Welcome, welcome to 2GS System 602. Let me reposition the camera. All right, so it's booting into GSOS. And yeah, sorry about this bar in the picture here. It's just because I can't sync this camera exactly to the screen. I have some games and stuff on here. So supposedly it's five to 10% faster. <laughs> really? A little skeptical. So there it is, total memory, 2,176 kilobytes total with 1,439 free. So it's pretty typical you can buy RAM expansion cards that are like four, eight megs off eBay now. There's someone who makes like a new modern card. It's so small, it's got a few surface mount chips on it and it goes into this thing and gives it eight megabytes and it's really reasonably priced. $60 maybe, or $40, or forgot what the exact price is. It's always out of stock because it's such a good deal, but it works really well. I have a four meg version that I used to sell in my other machine, it works perfectly. And yes, actually looking at this monitor some more here, nice and sharp, very, very pleasing how good this looks. So why don't we try what Rastan here. Rastan launch, uh, play? Boy, I'm not sure what to run. Let's try the play one. A disk error has occurred. This not good. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. That's funny. Well, let's try Space Fox. I don't remember what that is. I think it's got some music and stuff. Let's see. Ooh, look at those fancy effects. I'm spitting all over the screen here. A little bit of purity issues on this monitor here. Here and here. It's a... Uh, a little discolored, so it's a bit in the corners here too. It's probably the yoke slightly mispositioned. Um, Could have always been that way, but it's probably also due to the aging of the CRT that's caused that. Look at those 16-bit graphics, fancy. Apple 2GS games were pretty slow to load, like really, really bad compared to say the Amiga or the ST. Oh, music. So I don't have a, a joystick connected, so this may require a joystick. Yeah, it's there's no joystick, so the ship went right here. So I was using some tricks for the color because there's definitely more than 16 colors on screen here, especially with that yellow in the middle that was there a second ago. But the 2GS is able to use interrupts to switch color palettes on a line-by-line -line basis. So I'm just firing to the music. And I just died. <laughs> Obviously you're supposed to fly around and shoot the little bad stuff. And I, I keep dying here. All right, I just turned down the volume. So yeah, like you can hear the sound is pretty good on the 2GS if you're unfamiliar with it. It's very decent. It's really let down by the fact that Apple only gave it 64K of sound RAM. If the synthesizer chip had more memory to it, it could have really shone and done some amazing things. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Tefan, thank you very much for sending in this amazing Apple 2GS ROM 3, which is something I've never had. I've never even seen one in person. And then not to mention that zip drive and the Apple II SCSI card, amazing. Those are things are, not very common, well, especially the Apple SCSI card, not very common anymore. Very usable. I could put that Apple SCSI card into other machines like my 2 Plus and the Apple IIe, and even the Laser 128. I theoretically can use it on that slide side slot as well. So super, super cool. I really appreciate the monitor as well. That thing looks really nice, actually. It's definitely better than the Apple IIgs monitor that I already have. So pretty kick ass. 
So if anyone watching enjoyed this video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up. You know how it all goes. It definitely helps the engagement when people do that. Don't forget to check out my second channel if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button over there. It really helps me out. I put all sorts of weird and random stuff on there. And uh, so there might be something fun to watch. Sometimes I take apart CRTs like this and I might check them out inside and do repairs if necessary. Stuff like that is on the second channel. I want to thank all my patrons. Their names are scrolling up the side of the screen right now. Huge thank you to them for all the support that they give me. The YouTube revenue streams are all pretty far down over the summer, which kind of sucks. Don't know what's going on there, but it seems to be across the board, not just for me, but other creators as well. So instead of bringing you sponsorships all throughout the video, multiple breaks like us other YouTubers are doing now, I'm not going to do any of that. So people who support me on Patreon, it really goes a long way to help me buy the equipment I need, the cameras and the lights and do the upgrades around the house and computer storage upgrades like I recently upgraded to a QNAP and tons of storage space and hard drives are really expensive right now. So that really helps my editing process. And anyhow, I've been babbling for long enough for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, again, a thumbs up. And oh, Tefan, you probably are tired after working out for this entire video because I think it's going to be rather long. So anyhow, thanks very much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.